So I did a vi video a few days ago about my Voyager camera uh, dying on me after 18 years, a little black and white backup camera. So I figure it's time for something new and I've done a little research. I've decided to go with this right here. Uh, it's a nine inch and what I like about it, it's a DVR. It's got four camera systems, a front, two sides and a rear. And it's got switchable wires so I can tie it in my turn of signals, my backup light if I want to, to go that, to go that route. So. I've just got it in today, and I'm going to take it down to the RV and do a little work on it, and uh, we'll see how, how it turns out. Let me show you a little bit more about it. It's got pretty good features. Let's scroll down here. Almost too good, to be to tell you the truth, for the price. Um, so I'm a little concerned about the quality, but the it's got pretty good ratings, you know, 4.3 stars out of out of five out of 295 people because you got to wonder you know, how many of those are true you know already if there are any fake reviews I don't know but uh, I got 30 days to try it out and send it back if it doesn't work for me so we'll get into it and do some testing all right so let's do some one-handed unboxing here's a little manual it's kind of decent and here's our, our goodie, goodie box it's got quite a bit of weight to it surprisingly heavier than I thought it was going to be, for the price actually. Uh, main wire harness goes to the camera. Not the camera, I guess the monitor. So one thing I don't know if I like, first thing I thought, I don't like how this is attached. It'd be nice if it came off, but I don't believe it does. But we'll see how it fits on the dashboard, see what it looks like. So it all looks pretty good. Okay, here's all the all the other cameras in here. And we got plenty of wire. I think it's like 65 foot, two 65 foot rolls for the big stuff, because that's gonna be more than enough for a 38 foot RV. And I forget what the smaller rolls are, but that's still gonna be plenty for the front cameras. So, so alrighty, so let me um, unbox this a little bit more with both hands and look at things a little bit closer. It's, it's pretty substantial. Actually larger than I thought it was going to be. Alright, let's dig in here a little bit deeper. Okay, so everything's out of the box, laid out for us. Um, Cameras are seem to be of nice quality. Metal brackets. I mean, that's probably some aluminum housing. Got some good weight to it. So I'm pleased with that. These, these cameras are pretty stout. That's that there's plastic. Sticks out more than I thought it would be, but I might would have liked it to be a little bit smaller. Um, what else we got? Got plenty of brackets here. All kinds of different bracket mounting options. This here. Wire harness. Uh, one thing I'm trying to think about, I don't know about these, some of these connections are going to be out, out exposed to the moisture, like the rear camera. So I thought about maybe drop me an O-ring in here, so when it tightens up, at least make a pretty tight seal, help keep out any moisture out of those connections. One thing I do like is the fact that we have both power and video uh, going on in one cable. So I like that aspect of it. So I've seen like some where you have to run a separate power wire or something. So everything's on one wire. So I'll, I'll be running a, if all this test well, then I'll be running, running this down the frame rail and attaching to the back of the coach. So that's kind of a glance at it. And so let's get to wiring some of this up and just do a little test run, see what it looks like. Well, check this out. This is, I noticed something looked funny. I thought something didn't look right. So I noticed, the slots aren't opened up. So check this out. I'll come in here with a little screwdriver. Open up their slots. So it's like they didn't get punched all the way. So I'm going to go through and open up all these slots. So a couple are open, but a lot of them are closed up. That's a little strange, but anyway, I'm going to go through and fix it. Alright, so that looks better. Open up all the slots. And remember to peel off your protective screen this this stuff right here it sticks to every dang thing because it has a little little tab up here in the corner to get a hold of 
to peel that off. I've seen people leave that stuff on and they, they think something's wrong with their screen. They just don't stop and peel off the protective covering. So don't forget that. Remember I mentioned earlier about not having an O-ring uh, on these connections that's going to be outside? Well, lo and behold, the one connection that's going to remain inside does have an O-ring. So that's, that's kind of odd. But anyway, so I'll be putting O-rings on the outside connections. The one place is probably not needed. That's where it's at. So... That might be a good idea to do. So I've got my camera laid up here. Let's do a little wiring and a little test and just see if things work. Okay, so just be careful when you're going to hook this up. You're a little notch there. We want to make sure that gets lined up. So don't, don't bend any pins. So we'll carefully get that pushed in there and tighten down and make our connections. All right, let me show you how I got this wired up. Uh, I recently added these little fuse blocks. They're really nice because, um, you know, like with an RV, with my situation, I'm always adding accessories. And it's uh, nice to have a way to add accessories and protect each one with its individual fuse. And uh, these are pretty cool because, like, for instance, if it blows a fuse, it'll light up and tell you, hey, you blew a fuse. That's pretty cool. And so one of these blocks I set up uh, to where it's on this accessory. And the other one is set up where it's hot all the time. Because depending on the application or clock or something, that needs power all the time. Other things need to be switched. So just like this device, um, the way it's wired up, it's got different signals. So we got the red wire. Right there it is. That's our accessory. So I've got it going down here on accessory. And I put me a 2 amp fuse on it. And then we got the yellow wire, which is positive all the time. And I've got because it, it comes with its own fuse, so it's got a two and a half fuse in it. And then we've got a ground wire to connect, a little black wire right here. Right there, it is. I got my little orange ground block, I found all my grounds back there, so it comes in handy. So, all right, so that basic wiring power wires are hooked up, no cameras are hooked up yet. So, I take my accessory, we should it should light up. But there we go. All right, so we know the screen works in accessory mode. Let's go take the key off. So make sure it goes back off. Got it. Okay, it finally went off. All right, now let's go like start position. Make sure she comes on there. All right. All right, so that's working. All right, so now, now let's hook up some cameras and see if they work. Okay, it's working so far so good. Uh, and I, I was testing the black and white function. So I blocked the light, you see it goes in the I guess infrared mode for nighttime viewing. And it switches back to color. I was testing each one. You can hear them, you can hear them switch. There it goes. Last one. All right. I know each one's working. We're recording. That looks pretty good. Uh, now I guess I need to start move, un moving some of these cameras outside alongside the RV just to see what the house going to look like. Okay, so I was playing with my trigger wires. This is channel two. So channel two, if we apply 12 volts to it, down here and touch 12 volts, you'll see it'll switch off all the other cameras. And channel 2 has to be our backup camera because it gives our little markings. So that's pretty cool. I like how it does that. There's channel 2. Now what's the other ones here? <clears throat> so we've got channel... Oh, channel 3. So that'd be one of the turner signals. And I guess the other one's left is channel 4. No, no, it's the backup camera again. Here, it's the gray wires for. There we go. All right, so all the trigger wires are working. They're doing their job. All right. So I've done a drive run, been playing with it for a couple hours here. I, I like what I see. I like the, you can lay the camera out different ways. I kind of like this way, I think, the best because I got the, there's the front wheel well on the left-hand side. There's the right-hand side. And then there's the back camera. 
you know, because I need to get this outside and on the road, and do some testing and record that to get a better better view. And then have my trigger wire wires, so when I turn on a turn a signal, it'll go full screen. I think that'll be pretty sweet. Not so interested in having a front camera working. Um, I, I may or may not hook that up because uh, I've already got a dedicated camera there that records all the time. But um, so I guess the next step is I got to see about removing the old Voyager camera system, get it out of the dash, and see how we're going to mount this. So it looks like something, and then we got to strategize, strategize about getting all the wiring uh, in place and get it run. So let's uh, start strategizing. All right, so if you're an RV owner, you might be watching this because you need to replace your Voyager camera system. So it looks pretty easy to remove. Uh, let's, get, let's get some light on the subject here. There we go. So we got our, what do we got here? So we got our power connector right there. That's our speaker and sound right there. And then we've got another little wire. Actually, this feeds the little front speaker. Uh, so we can hear the sound that the camera produces. So we've got that unplugged. So everything, everything about the TV is disconnected. So now we just got to, if you notice, there's two wing nuts up in there. See that one right there? There's one on the other side. It's a little bit more difficult to get to, but it's there. So I'm going to reach up in there and unscrew those two knobs. And hopefully that TV will just pop right on out. Oh, I realized something after I got it out. We actually have two knobs. So you got two knobs on each side. But uh, there you go. It's a, it's a heavy little, little, little outfit. So anyway, we'll get rid of that now. And now we just got to see about uh, getting this new camera mounted in there in a nice, neat way. So it looks like something. Okay, so here we're imagining we're driving at night, what it would be like. Because I've put the I, I've put the dimness down as low as it'll, as it'll go. So it's it's not it's not too distracting at all. I was a little bit concerned earlier because it was pretty bright. But now that I've, I've pulled the brightness down, so it should work just fine. Alright. I'm liking that. More, and all, more better all the time. Okay, just to show you what I'm doing for mounting, uh, because I've still got this nice metal bracket from the old Voyager TV. So what I did, I, this is the bracket that comes with the, the camera system. I kind of pushed it in there where I wanted it, and then I went in from the back side and clamped a vice grip and this other little clamp on here where I got it in position where I, where I want it. That, that looks really good. It's nice and centered. So now I'm going to come back in here with uh, try to get a self-tapping screw and go through this thin sheet metal and get into this this thicker metal here. Hopefully, hopefully I can accomplish that, but it's kind of a little bit of an angle, so it might be a little tricky. Let's see what we can come up with. All right, I'm trying to show you how I accomplished this with one hand. So I'll hold the camera and show the other. But anyway, this worked out great. This little device I got here, it's an old thing. I've had it for 30 years. It's called a skew driver. I remember my wife bought this on QVC many years ago. And actually still got the box for it. Right there it is. So you got a SKU Driver Pro. Handy little thing. For projects like this when you need to get an angle. So I've got my little impact on here. And then when I give it some juice, see what happens. So all I did, I, I did, did one. I just want to get this turned around correct. So I just got like this. Gave it some juice, pressed down, bored a hole right through it. Got it anchored really tight. So I'm about to do the same thing right here. Of course, it's going to take two hands. So let me get that done, and I'll be right back. There you go. Got that nice, good, and strong. Good and sturdy. Ain't going nowhere now. All right, so we got that accomplished. And so now let's uh, get it mounted back in there. All right, let me show you how, now that I've got this mounted, it works out pretty easy. So I've got those screws put in there, that worked out well. I'm trying to do everything with one hand. But all you got to do is loosen this piece, just pivots back and forth. You can remember we got this also, got the wing nut on the back. So all you got to do is tilt it forward. 
and slide it down over that little slot right there. Once you slide it on there, get it in position, tilt it back. And once you tilt it back, I'm going to be careful here. Once you tilt it back, you tighten up this wing nut on the back side, and then tighten this one up, and you're good to go because you'll be doing all this from underneath that way. And it gets it all snug and, uh, and, and looks really nice. And it's not going anywhere. So that mounting worked out pretty well for me. Like I remember I mentioned earlier, I wanted to get a put a seal on these connectors to keep any moisture out of it. So I found the perfect size. It's a 5 16th by 1 16th. Mm, got this from Harbor Freight. So that fits right in there just right. So I'll keep the keep the keep the crud and moisture out of that connection. Well, every once in a while I come up with a good idea. I kind of like this one. So, because I always like trying to find solutions to problems. So here's my problem. My problem was I got these nice cool side mount cameras, but my dilemma was I did want I did not want to drill no holes in the side of the RV. You know, in case I want to upgrade later or I didn't like them, whatever. I wanted to have an option. So I came up with something I'm, I'm fixing to go show you. I'm fixing to mount them. But before I get back to the RV building, while I'm in the garage, I was going to show you what I did. I just took me a, some three-quarter wide flat aluminum, one-eighth by three-quarter aluminum, and and I, I, I drilled a two one-eighth holes. I got me a little tap here. It's a number eight, 32 threads per inch tap. So I got got my threads cut, got that done. And then I cut me, that was a 1564, so I drilled me a 1564 hole, then took a hacksaw and sliced it because that's where my wire is gonna, gonna fit through. So now let's go back to the RV and I'll show you how cool this is gonna work. Now don't that look sharp? Got it mounted, well loosely mounted right now. And there's no screws in the RV. I just utilize this slot and put that little bracket I made so give an ideal here. I made this back off. You see, I got it slotted enough where the, the cord is just fits in behind there. So, so that piece of aluminum grabs behind this piece, fiberglass, and then this piece of fiberglass. And I tighten it up, kind of pinches it, put puts a little clamping force on it, and it's really on there. It's good and sturdy. So that's going to work out pretty smooth. And then I cut my run my cable down through this slot here, tuck it up and under, and run it up through the dash. Get all that done here in a few minutes. That's going to be snazzy. I got no holes in the RV, so that was what I wanted to accomplish. So we got it done. Okay, just to give you an idea of how these work, it's pretty cool. This camera's like just a round ball. And you can see how this is rounded here. It's got that cushion in it. So you tighten up those four screws, it clamps it in place. But just before you get it good and tight, you have the ability to pivot it and, and rotate it around. Get it exactly where you want it. Because if you don't watch, you may have a, your picture may be upside down. So if you can just rotate it, get it where you want, snug it up. Probably need a helper for that. So, and that's all you got to do. Okay, it's time to start working on the back camera. There, here's my original Voyager camera from 18 years ago. And of course, it's seen better days. And I got my new camera. I did remove this little hood. I don't think I need that because I've already got this. And one thing you're going to need is a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. I did not see one in the in the packet here of, all, of everything else. I thought there would be one, but there's not. So if you plan on adjusting your cameras, you're going to need to grab you a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Otherwise, you're going to have a problem. So. Uh, Let's get back to the back and maybe run some wires and see what else we're going to get into. So let me show you how I'm running my wires. Because so I've got a Winnebago 38J on a Workhorse W24 chassis. And see how we got this? Oh, where's it at? There it is. So we'll get this nice hole in the firewall. It's got a rubber grommet. I'll show you the rubber grommet on the men's side. That's a nice large hole. I can poke. Luckily, it's big enough. I can poke the... Uh, cable in through and then it's got a rubber grommet on the other end now this is the um, cable that's going to be running to the back camera so I got to fish it down and run it all the way along the frame rail 
So that's going to take a little patience to get that done and probably a lot of zip ties. Okay, now here's what we got on the, ins on the inside. See, it's like a split bushing. See, it's split so I can run the wires into it. And then shove it down in there. It seals up that hole. And it's got that real nice flange on the back side to keep the air out. So it's a pretty good setup. I like how the Winnebago came up with that. So it makes a nice clean look. Well, you know how it goes. I spoke too soon. Actually, I got to think, looking at this and I reminded myself that I'm going to want to cut this. Winnebago didn't slice that. I did. Because I remember I needed to add a wire to it and it had it fitting on it or something. So I sliced it so I could run it through. But because now I'm running three coax cables through there, it's too small. So my plan is to put it in a socket to keep it shape. And then I got me a half inch drill bit here. I'm going to bore down through it. And let's see if I can't get that hole a little bit bigger so I can get it get up. so I can get all my cables through. Well, that's the plan anyway. All right, so there you go. That's what, that's what we call more better in Kentucky. So a little bit bigger hole and get all, all three cables in there. And that'll work. Okay, see how nice and neat that is? Zoom back in there and get some more light on it. All right, so all my wires are going through the firewall, tucked in nice and snug. Let's show you what it looks like on the front side. All right, so here we go. Everything's all coming through the firewall nice and clean. I still got to zip tie these wires up and get them out of the way or my, my coax cables, or not coax cables, video cables. Now, the next challenge is I got 65 foot of cable here. Big mess. I need to thread it down through, around, down the, all the way down the frame rail, you know, to the back of this RV, 38 feet behind us. So let's get on to that process. That'll be fun. Okay, just a tip for you because I've done this stuff before. Um, you know, you see I'm coming, coming down here, I'm just in front of the wheel, wheel wheel. And I've run it through these three loops here. And I've pulled it all the way through. And i got my big pile here. And I'll do that in sections. Don't expect you're going to run it all the way down the frame wheel and tug it all the way through. You're going to have too much friction. So just do it in, in small sections and you'll eventually get it done. So I'll, I'll go down through here and try to make it past that turn and then pull all this mess of wire through again. Okay, I'm making a nice long run here. See how my cable's going? I'm going through each one of these existing loops. There's my pile of wire at the end. I'm coming up here and I'm just tugging along. And I can go back through and add a couple of zip ties where needed. But, uh, that's how you do it. Just take your time. Make sure nothing's pinched anywhere. And you'll get her done. Okay, a tip for you. So you can see, I've run the wire down the outside of the frame well. Okay, now I'm getting to the point to where we get coming to the, the back tire. Now at this point, you don't want the wire running on the outside of the frame, on the outside of the frame well, rail. You want to make sure it's uh, on the inside so it's protected. So I've made the transition. I've came inside the inside the frame wheel with it. And this is close to the exhaust, so it's kind of warm here. So I've also protected it with some wire loom and put a zip tie on it so it don't go nowhere. So you can see I'm running it up through, up and over. I'm gonna add me some more zip ties and I'll get it up past this uh, tire and keep wake, working my way to the, to the back end and we'll hook the camera up. And in case if you're wondering if you're gonna have enough cable, I think what I said there's 65 feet comes in this thing. You know, so from running to the dashboard out front, all the way down the frame rail and around up the back cap, I still got a pretty good water wire left. So, so you should have plenty of wire for your your application, whatever you're putting your your camera system on. All right, final step. I got uh, got me a string on here, pulled it up through the hole. Now I'm just gonna hook the camera up to it and do a little adjusting. It's gonna be hard to adjust till I actually get it out of this building and get a car behind it, and get it set right. So. We've almost getting it done. Okay, one thing I've used off the old camera is this little rubber grommet. I carefully took a razor blade and sliced it so I can put it over that wire and seal up that hole. So let's climb the ladder and get that done. Alright, there you go. Grommet is in place, just like factory. You got that part looking good. Alright, so if you're taking notes and you have never went a bago. Because of this bracket, it's a little bit longer than the old bracket on the old camera system. I did have to lower it down about an inch in order for 
the window to line up like that. So that should look pretty good. I'll come back now. We'll get me. Let me get some silicone and slip those old holes or fill up those old holes and put those three screws in and we'll just about have all this completed. Okay, now I'm hooking up my signal wires because I want to be able to turn on my turn signal and have the camera to switch over to the left or right to see whatever is beside of me to eliminate my blind spots. So I uh, got to thinking about well, how I'm going to tie into the uh, turn signal wires and I was trying to figure out well, how am I going to find those wires. So I got to thinking about it. Our instrument cluster of course lights up when we go left to right on our turn signal. So well all I got to do is find the wire. So I went and downloaded the manual here and that's the pinout and it shows me there so number 19 and 20 I figured out right here and I marked them pin 19 and 20 is left hand right hand wires. So I disconnect it from the back of the instrument cluster right there and you got a large connector and a small connector so it's the small connector I found out there we got the light blue and the dark blue and I see which which light blue is left hand and the dark blue is right hand so now I've, and I've cut open all the tape here so I could get better access to my wires that I'm going to put new wire loom around it so I've already made my cut and I'm going to crimp these back together nice and tight with a good good crimp connection so here's my little wires going to my camera system we got a gray and we got a dark dark blue and they just go right up over here so let me get them crimped I'll do a test make sure it works and then we'll uh, put all the wire loom put, make this wiring look back look, look good again all right here you go you can see I've got me some wire loom to protect my wires again all that put back. These are number turning signal wires. I've tied into those. Got them crimped really good. It looks like I got plenty of room. Everything will close up well. And that's another thing you want to be mindful of getting, doing all this kind of work. You want to make sure your wires are, are tucked well so when everything gets closed up, nothing's getting pinched. All right, so let's close this up and do a test. Okay, test number one. We're going to turn on the left turner signal. And you'll see it turns on the left screen. All right, let's go to the right turn of signal. And there's a, a delay. You can see it's got, I think it's, you can set it on three, six, or nine second delay. So it stays on there after the turn of signal is turned off. Okay, so we're driving down the road. I'm fixing to make a right hand turn. I want to make sure no one's in my blind spot. Turn on my turn of signal. And there it is. I'll be able to look all up and down the side of the RV, make sure everything's clear. Once I make my lane, lane change, turn off the turn of signal. And it'll stay there for maybe I've got it set, set at six seconds. I'm not sure what I got it set. There it goes. Then it goes back to normal display, uh, back camera in the two sides. So pretty cool, pretty cool. I was looking into the backup camera, but I'm thinking it looks like the only way I could tap into that would be at the transmission. I don't believe there's a signal wire here on the dash. Um, so I may have to rethink that option. Don't. Don't know if that's really that important or not. I can just as easily just push the button here and, and change to uh, back there. Just tap that button twice. I've got the full view of the backup camera. So yeah, I'll probably just go that route. I won't be, be fooling with the with that. But I do like having the turn of signal uh, situation. Pretty cool system. I can't believe that's what I say, like $369. It's amazing what, what this system can do for uh, such little money. Well, I mentioned earlier I wasn't going to hook up the backup trigger wire to the camera. I didn't feel it was necessary, but I did find out I already have a wire here under the dash. So I'm going to tap into it. And how I came about it, I was looking at the, the manual from the old Voyager camera system. And I was looking at the connector because I'm, I'd unplugged it. And I said, what, what do all these wires do? And I found out, and you seen this blue wire, it said back. I said, well, that must be a backup trigger wire. And sure enough, it is. And I tested it with a test light. And if you have a workhorse chassis, you have a little connector like that right there. So just take your test light, and if you uh, put it on, on this pin right here, focus right there, that pin, and you put it in reverse, this light will light up. And that will trigger the camera system to uh, uh, turn on only the backup camera. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, this is the green trigger wire from the camera system, and I'm going to tie it into... 
blue wire on this connector. But as I do that, I want to point out this. This is the coolest little tool. I don't know. I think this is like was maybe eighteen dollars. But I am amazed at what a good job it does for stripping wires. Even these really small wires I've been doing, because it'll strip them so well, and you won't lose any strands. Um, one of the best little tools I've, I've got in a while. I'm going to try to show you here one-handed. If I can strip it with one hand, you can strip it with two. Okay, get in real close. Yeah, I've got it. I got the wire laid in there. And see how the the jaw there on the uh, left-hand side grabs and holds the wire, and that other one just pinches and strips. That's all you got to do. And we've lost no strand. That's It's got a bit of solder on the end of it. It's kind of hard to pull off. Yeah, but anyway, that's how sweet that works, and it didn't cut any strands. I don't know how. I've been using the same for about a year now. Just really impressed with it. Don't know how they can make something so cheap, but but for the money, that is that is my new go-to strip tool. I like it. I like it. Okay, so now I've tapped into the backup wire, and I'm gonna show you what how it works. And I'm gonna put it in reverse. Camera comes on. Pretty cool. Put it back in park. And I think there's a six second delay. And then it goes back. Ta-da! Sweet, sweet. Coming together. Looking good. Right, I'm going to try to remember to put these in the, sh in the notes below the video. There's two tools you need if you're going to work with wiring. A good stripping tool, but a, more importantly, a good crimper. Because this crimps both insulated and non-insulated. So, like, for instance, you know, here's a because that's insulated. Non-insulated, I don't even know if I have one laying down here. Well, because a non-insulated one would be, it doesn't have a piece of plastic on it. Focus, focus, there you go. And th this will do will do both. Of course, it's got cutters at the end. But it's good long handles, so you can get a really good squeeze on it. These things are probably 20 years old, but you know, a tool like this lasts you a lifetime. So I'll try to find those and put a link to it, along with that one. Super handy tool. Oh, and something else I'd recommend is upgrading your memory card. I think I got a, it comes with a 32 gigabyte. It'll accept up to 128 gigabyte memory card. So I've got that in there and I'm just letting it record 24 seven. So I can kind of get an idea on how many days this thing will store. Um, so we'll, we'll, I can be able to report back later because I'm hoping to get this on the road maybe tomorrow and uh, do some test driving and adjust cameras and everything. Okay, just showing my finished up wiring. So I got all my three cables coming out. From the firewall here everything zip tied into place but i wanted to point out how well this worked out going those outside cameras on the side of the rv let me see here see where the wire is going in there and that little you can see that little i think you see that little bracket i made so how the camera the camera sits right here it worked out really well i can't can't see i didn't have to drill no holes don't see no wire and uh, so back over here, run my cables down through and drop down, fall on the wire and harness, went down the frame rail and all that stuff. And then the same way on this side, you see, nice clean install. Worked out pretty smooth. All right, test one with the tripod. Testing one, all right, right here. All right, turn the signal on. Turn the signal on the other way. Hit reverse. Alright, I can drive. Okay, seeing we got some daylight, I thought I'd show you what everything looks like here when it's all said and done. How my little front cameras are mounted in there with my little bracket. Looks really well. Uh, I've decided just to leave this front camera hooked up. Uh, I've got a little magnet sitting there actually. It, it, it attaches to the uh, dashboard because it's all steel anyway. It kind of holds it in place nice. That's worked out well. I'm just going to show you what the how it looks from the side. I'll show you the back camera. That turned out nice. Can zoom in on it. There you go. A little dark. We got this side too. And remember, when you have to adjust these cameras, you just you loosen up 
there's like four little screws. You loosen up those four little screws. And this camera is kind of like in a ball socket. So you can rotate it, move it in and out every which way to get it where you want it. And anyway, that's what the final, final result turned out to be. I'm really pleased with it so far. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit about the menu system. First of all, if you got red dots down here, that means you're recording. You got to tap your select button to get out of record mode. Then the menu button will work. That'll get you into the menu. So when I first got this thing, I couldn't get in the menu because I got a, I had it in rec record mode. So let's go into the menu. Okay, of course you got date settings. Um, select. Simple enough. You put your year, month, time. It's military time, by the way. And then the the ch like channel minus. That's kind of also like a back button. So once you go into the, into the menu, it times out kind of quick. But if you want to go from switch from one screen to the other, and you got these little buttons here, it moves you around. So got the time. Let's go to view, hit select. Okay, so this is it changes your brightness and contrast. And I'll show later tonight when it gets dark. Uh, if you drive at night and you want it really really dim, oh, times out quick, doesn't it? Well, come on, do it again. Go menu here, select. Okay, so your brightness and contrast, you'll, you'll take those all the way down. So you can, you can choose what you want. I go There we go. So you take, take that down. It'll make it dark if you want to do that at nighttime. If you're a nighttime driver, you might want to dim it some. Got that. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go menu okay we got view it also got, got playback so you can play your recordings back hit select and let me see i got some recordings in here somewhere and let me show you what i got okay so let me show you go we're going to playback hit select and we'll go to channel three i got some because you can you know what's cool about this app is the dvr so it's a security security system also so channel three hit select here and you'll see me coming around the corner. Now you hit select it again, and it'll start playing. And then you can hit this button. It'll go fast forward. You can fast forward up to, up to 8x. You can speed it up, slow it down, pause it. Here I come. So if someone's messing around your RV, it'll record. It'll hold like 19 hours of of, uh, of record time. So if you see someone monkeying around with your RV, or you, you've been gone and you come back and something don't look right, you can go back and play your footage. So. It's pretty good. It really makes a good good footage too. You can definitely tell who that is. Looks like a shyster to me for sure. All right, so you got to be you got that. Let's go back out of this menu. Where else we're we gonna go? Go back. So we had to. Okay, so we keep going back. Go back to menu. And we was in. Uh, okay, play back. Then we got the split setting. So this is what I like, the, the layout, but you can do it all kinds of different ways. You know, just two channels, and it tells you what channel. That's the layout I, I choose. So it gives me the, the back video on top and the left and right. Of course, when I turn on a turn signal, it'll go full screen. Okay, what else we got in the menu? Uh, split setting, I've got our system. Let's see what's in there. System settings. Reversing lane, that takes those little, when you back up, those little lines, tells you whether kind of road is you can take turn those on or off if you want um image mirror you use that uh i noticed when i when i did some recording things things that were on the left were on the right you have to go in there and you you reverse, reverse that image let me go back into that and show you da -da 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 -da. oops hit select and image mirror select now you got I got front and back turned on so that way it looks correct when you play it back. Otherwise, things that's on the left are on the right. And it's go oh boy, and you gotta stay on the be on Johnny on the spot because it times out on you pretty quick. Okay. Delay, that's that's the delay with the turner signals. You can get three, six, or nine seconds. So after your turner signals turn off, it'll hold the, the picture there, the screen still for three six or nine seconds in, in language english 
rotate that's if you want to rotate the monitor don't know why you want to do that don't know what this is voice settings it don't seem to do anything um, version number uh, all recording time it records in three minute intervals I think you can change it one two or three I leave it and, and of course timestamp that's I don't know why you wouldn't want to want to do that so yeah I keep that on format if you put a new SD SD card in and that's, that's what I did I uh, installed one of these 128 gigabyte SD card and I'll put this in the in the notes at the bottom uh, a link to this and the SD card that I used and let me see did I get done let me get back here system menu yeah that's the format if you do the default settings image mirror yep yeah, I think we pretty much covered everything I do believe that'll I'm just get in here and play around I'll, I'll get you started anyhow Okay, I wanted to show you a little bit of a nighttime view because uh, that's the default setting there. It's not so bad, but you might find it a little bit bright. So if you do, well, let me turn on a little lights. I see what buttons I'm pushing. So you have to go in here because remember I mentioned before when the when the red lights are flashing, the menu button is not going to work. You're gonna push it. You're not gonna go anywhere. So push your select button. Turn off the recording. Then you go into menu, and then we want to go to its view. Okay, hit select, and we want to dim this down. Let's go the other way. Take down the brightness. If you really want to get it dark, then you also take down the contrast. Those two will really get it down for you. Well, we're too far down. There we go. Okay, so now you're driving. Let me turn this other light off. There you go. So you can kind of barely tell what's even on, but you can still see. You can see the car there to the side. You can see behind us. You can see the back of the driveway. You see the street. So you can still see a little bit with it. So that's that, but let me show you a little something I made, because um, I guess I'm impatient. And like I said, I, I'm kind of impatient on some things, so here's what I was getting at. So I was thinking about when I was, I'm driving down the road, and I've got it dimmed down the way I want. This is, this is a normal setting here, but I've had it really dim, but I was fixing to get off on an exit, and I wanted it to be bright really quick. I thought, well, what could I do, because I didn't want to have to jump into the menu and push a couple buttons and spend 20 seconds. I thought, okay, what if I had a something I could instantly make it dim and bright? So here's what I come up with. This little piece right here. Ta-da. So that's dim. I dim it down really quick. You want to brighten it up, I just pop it out. So, so I got a little place here to sit this. And I'll tell you what. What I made here, I took a little piece of very thin plexiglass. This is from a poster. Like if you have a, a poster you'd hang on your wall. But they make these frames for them, and it comes in a super thin plexiglass. And then I got me a piece of uh, window clean. Here's some of it here. This window film. It's and it's just clean type. You just peel and stick it on there, static clean. And so I made that little piece. And so when I'm when I'm not needing it, I just park it right here. Got the CB that never gets used. If I want to make it dim real quick, I just pop it in there like that. And I got the dimensions here. I wrote, I wrote them down just, just in case you want to make you one. It's four and three quarter by seven, no, by four and three quarter inch by eight inch and seven sixteenths. And it makes it a hair bit long, so it wedges in there. And you might not want to go to that ex extreme, but I kind of like it. So I can, I can quickly make it bright. And I don't have to jump into the menu. I can just leave the menu that setting and like this thing's been running now i think about two weeks i've had it on 24 hours a day recording just i wanted to test everything really well remember we here uh, we get about 19 hours record time recording all four cameras so it's pretty sweet so uh i really like the system and so next up you can show you some footage of uh, actually driving it down the road making lane changes watching traffic going through parking lots making turns and stuff so so check that out okay recording test one down the road, fix 
just gonna get on the little bypass here. Turn on the turner signal. See the nice side view. Ain't that cool. straight, turn center goes off, go, should go back to regular view after about six seconds, there we go. Little beans. So the traffic come up alongside. Man, this got such a wide view, that is amazing. I think you really only need the turn of signal thing. Let's test the turning signal. If I was going to make a lane change, make a, if I was going to go take a left, left hand cha lane change, lots of the whole side. And awesome. So I'll make the lane change. Everything's clear. signal off. Alright, now see traffic coming up the other way. Here they come. Traffic coming. And there they go. Alright, let's go back to the other side. Like a right hand lane change, turn the signal on. Everything's clear. Turn the signals off. Go back to normal view. I want full camera view. There's the that's the back. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, that's camera run one. So yeah, that's the front view. And it's recording all, all four channels are being recorded at all times. There's camera two. Camera three. Camera four. Back to the split screen. I like it, I like it. Alright, we're going to come up on our turnaround. We're going to turn the signal. Side view. All is clear. Blocked off, ain't yeah, they? they do. What if you go turn around at the church? Can you do that? You can do that. sugar in the car in the turn.
negotiating some skinny roads now. That is handy, look at that. Watch the curb. the curb, you can watch it all the way, it's so nice. I caught a thief. Someone's in my car. Oh no, that's my sweet pea. That's pretty neat, isn't it? And remember, this thing cord can record 24/7. Ah, she's coming back in. All right, a little bit more footage. Just can't get enough of it. Getting spoiled, getting spoiled. How much is that system? 369. you can change the time on how I think from three to six to nine seconds on the delay time that the time the turning signal comes back to the split screen.
Now that rock is bad, didn't we? A whole lot better. We're talking about the new track ball we just put in. Notice it's a lot, lot less rock back and forth when we make those turns. Back into the neighborhood. Make some turns. Let's go the long way. Last turn, we'd we'll be back home. Well, we'll just pull in another hook. Just back, back out. Watch the mailbox. I can't see the mailbox. I can't see the mailbox. Watch, watch, watch. There we go. And we missed the mailbox. Okay, so now we've unhooked the car. I'm gonna go back out, get some gas. Yeah, turn on my turn signal. I can get a side view. Oh no, it doesn't work in reverse. I see it, but it's... it don't work in reverse? No, I thought it might. Are you sure? Yeah, you turn on it's when you it's a trigger wire, so when you're in reverse you stay in reverse. Regardless, it's the turn signals on. Okay, let's negotiate Kroger's and get some gas here.
Makes it nice for getting gas too. Well, I guess that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe you get your upgrade your camera system. There's my final setup when it's all said and done. Looks nice and clean. Uh, you know, like I said, I think it'll make you a great camp for the money. It can't be, be beat, I don't believe, with the DVR system that it has. So, again, thanks for watching. Y'all have a blessed day. See you, bye.